What's up out there? In this video, I wanna run through the different builds that I've started. So my plan for this whole league was to have one build per ascendancy. I wanted to try all the different ascendancies out and just to see how they worked. There's some ascendancies I've never used before. Uh, the Occultist, I don't think I'd ever used. I would used the Necromancer before. I've not used any of the Templar at all. I don't even know what that looks like. The reason I wanted to do this was to learn the, the ascendancy part, what the ascendancy is good for. Like you can look at it in POB and see what it says and that's all great. But until you actually play it and try the skill and see how it works, how does it scale? How does it feel? Uh, there's a lot of skills that I try and I just don't like, or I, I, you know, I try them out and they're like, eh, whatever. There's some skills I try and I immediately take to, and then I try a build out. And that's kind of what I wanted to do with this leak. That's what I've spent my entire time doing this leak. Now I have worked on one particular build that got me through my mapping. I, I've, I've got some time into a few builds, but there's a lot of different builds that I started and just didn't get anywhere. So before I clean some of these builds out, I thought I would make this video and just show some of the progress that I did because I did work on some of these and I got them up to a point where I thought they were, uh, I got them up to where I stalled out or found something I didn't like and then I just quit. So the reason I'm doing this now, instead of working on these, I've deleted, I had a bunch of these at level two because I had brought basically one character for each ascendancy up through uh, Hillock and got him into the, the very first area. So that's basically level two. I did that for all the different ones. I had them all named. So like I've got Duelist of Champion that's still left. We've got Marauder of Berserker and Marauder of Chieftain. That way I knew what that one was a placeholder for and then I could just go into it. So I've got a whole bunch of these, Marauder of Juggernaut. And you can see they're all at various different states. Like some of them are level 30, some of them are fairly low level. Like this Marauder only got to level five and I just didn't like what was going on. It's nothing wrong with Berserker. I just didn't like the skills that I was at and I wasn't feeling that mood. Now, I don't necessarily plan on deleting these immediately. I may, I may not. I may come back to these. I haven't for sure decided. What I have decided is that I really liked the Chieftain and I made a Tectonic Slam Chieftain that I'm going to do a build guide for at some point and I'm kind of considering I'm probably going to league start that in SSF. I am playing in Trade League right now to take advantage of the currency exchange which has been great, I love it. But I would like to league start one and work on this. I got a really good mace, uh, a unique mace, but I would like to take this build from scratch and see what it feels like to league start it and then build it as I go. So I'm probably gonna do that in SSF and that I'll probably do a build guide around it when I get to that point. So we're not gonna look at this build today and we're not gonna look at my uh, uh, Caustic Arrow Trickster. That's a good build. That's what I league started with. It's good for heist and uh, it, it's good for heist. Let's just say that. This Exsanguinate build, uh, let me back up for this Chieftain thing. I really like the Chieftain part and I have a couple of ideas that I'd like to try. For one, I potentially I would do a Bone Shatter of Carnage on the Chieftain. I'm considering that. I haven't quite got there yet, but I really like the Chieftain because of the, the amount of fire damage and everything you can get, the the way you can build the fire resistance up and not have to worry about all the other resistances. Like that ascendancy is awesome. So I wanna do my own take of a, a righteous fire build. So that's why this one's stubbed out at level two. I got this one in there. I am currently working on an Exsanguinate Chieftain. It may not pan out exactly as I want it to, but it is pretty fun right now. I've got it up to level 60. It's, I think I'm in act eight or nine of the campaign. I think I'm in act eight. So I'm flying through the campaign fairly well with it. It's doing some decent damage. Uh, it does no fire damage. So a lot of the stuff that the, the chieftain can work with is not there. However, I don't have to worry about all the resistances and stuff like that. I'll do a separate video for that one. Uh, we'll come back to him. We'll come back to uh, Righteous Fiery Balls over here. Uh, let's take a look at this champion build. I'd love to do a champion build and just to try all the different ascendancies out. I've done Slayer, but I'd like to do uh, champion. I don't even know what this guy's running. Oh, Splitting Steel. I think I basically, I'm stalled out in act two. I, I just got to the point where this was cool. But it just, I, I don't know, I just didn't feel like going any further with it. I know this is a good skill, a lot of people use it. And I, I think Splitting Steel Champion is something that people do a lot of. 
I haven't even gotten it that far yet. I don't know why I quit on it. I don't remember if I just got bored with it or what, but this is kind of where I ended up with this one. And basically it looks like I was coming over here. Oh, I wanted to mess with impales. That's why I wanted to tinker with this was to do something with impales. I think that's on, uh, I think that's what champion has a lot of in the ascendancy is impale skills. So I wanted to work with that. I don't necessarily think I want to delete this one, but this is one of the characters that I worked on and I'd like to see where it goes. Number one, trying to see what impale does, stuff like that. I just, like I said, that that's the whole point of this league for me was to try different ascendancies out and see what they were good for. Uh, and trying that, that chieftain out, I found all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, this one died off in act one. What are we using? For? Oh, I think I robbed all this stuff off. I was using ground slam and I got very bored of ground slam very quickly. And that's what stalled me off on this one. I'm sure the berserker is really cool, but I, I, it's not that I don't like ground slam. I think my approach to this, how I was working on this build was probably where I had my downfall. And that was that I was picking up equipment and stuff that it fell off the ground and it just wasn't doing very well. So that one didn't get very far. Uh, let's see here. The chieftain will talk. I've, I've already done the, the, that's my tectonic slam. Uh, the juggernaut. What did I do with juggernaut? I think I started. Oh, Sunder. This is the one using Sunder. Um, and I would need to put this staff back in place. So if I go into here, I think he's using this. Uh, I really like Sunder. I think Sunder's a very cool skill until I started using it a lot and it's just horribly slow. And I don't like how narrow the uh, the attack speed is. So I'm up to act six with this one. And I shouldn't say attack speed, but when you fire this thing off, it's just such a narrow shot. So you fire this thing out and sometimes it doesn't quite, I don't know, it just doesn't quite work the way I think it should. It, it like short strokes or something. I don't know. I just, I what I was feeling this until I wasn't, and I did some things to make it a little better. Um, where's that button at? There it is. I've got some of these things on. Uh, I, I'm using retaliation skills in a lot of these different builds, and I forget which key I put it on. Some keys I put it on, or some builds I have it on E, some I have it on W, and I think some I have it on Q. So I, I moved stuff around. This wasn't a bad build. Uh, it just. Eh. And maybe it was just timing, maybe because I, I was spending so much time on Tectonic Slam and I was getting into Tectonic Slam a lot more. Uh, I don't know. I, I, the biggest part that I really didn't like about this was the uh, just the narrow nature of how this thing, the AOE works on this. It's just so we're not in an open area. Is there a portal thing here now? So if I shoot this thing out, it's kind of more of a reverse cone and that's that's what i didn't like about it probably a different skill would be better uh i did get up into i did the ascendancy for it and i took unflinching i think my plan for this was to go into unyielding and unrelenting get all of the um endurance charge stuff going in here and then i wasn't quite sure where i was going to go with the rest of it maybe untiring um I don't remember exactly. So I would not need undeniable because I was taking resolute technique and I'm using a staff. I put used to the pillar of the cage God, which increases your area of effect with int uh, attack speed with Dex and the physical damage with strength. And I ended up picking up these two 30 point nodes over here. I grabbed utmost might for the extra strength and the increased attributes. And this wasn't bad. It played fairly slow. I also was starting to come over here for Disciple of the Unyielding. But the, the character moved very slow. I fixed that. I got these boots with movement speed and the attack speed was very slow, kicking this thing off. And I did some things to increase that. I don't remember exactly what I did, but I put some things on here that increased the attack speed. Uh, this one's not bad. I wasn't hating it, but I am not sure Sunder is the skill that I want to go with. I may keep, I'm probably going to keep going with this one at some point and revisit it and see where it's going. Uh, I don't know that the staff is the best weapon to use. It's just kind of what I was trying. The way I've been doing these builds is just trying it out and seeing how it feels. 
and then just kind of putting points in and uh, regret orbing out. The um, currency exchange is phenomenal. I love it. You can just pop in and uh, try to get some regret orbs or whatever. Just pop that stuff out real fast. Let's see. What is this skill? Oh, this is my Cobra Lash Pathfinder. Um, and I've used a lot of currency this league. So I like Cobra Lash. I think it's a very cool skill. It's got uh, some interesting features to it. So right off the bat, this thing chains. So it chains. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Can we kill this thing? Does it say here? Chains four times. And I don't have chain support on here. So this thing just chains by itself, which I think is very cool. I really like the chain ability in Exsanguinate. I, I, that thing gets around when you uh, start killing stuff. So I was tinkering around with this and trying to see how this looked and what it felt like. And I stalled out on this one because this one says 80% chance to poison on hit. That's on the tooltip. If I come over into here, uh, chance to poison on main hand is 50% each, which I'm using these claws. So I don't know if this 50% is incorporated into this. What I find with Exsanguinate uh, is that the weapon has no bearing on the damage of the skill. I don't know if Cobra Lash is that way or not, but it requires a, a claw and it's a 40% chance to poison on hit, which I'm also running, um, where's that at? It's the, um, I guess I'm not running it. I thought I was running the... Um, Oh, the Herald of Agony. I think it's the Herald of Agony. I think I was running that, but I didn't see that changing the per, uh, percent chance to poison either. So I'm not entirely sure. But this was kind of a build in progress. We're, what are we into? Act four. I kind of stalled out with this one. It just wasn't doing as, as much damage as I wanted. Killing off mobs isn't bad, but rares and stuff like that... Uh, it just wasn't really going, uh, it just really wasn't going where I wanted it to. So I ended up, I don't want to say I gave up on it, but I kind of uh, parked on that one. That That's why it's setting where it's at. This Warden, I really wanted to tinker around with tinctures. Oh, and the reason I took Pathfinder on the last one is because Pathfinder has poison stuff in it. And I wanted to tinker around with uh, the poison stuff on the Pathfinder Ascendancy. I thought that would be a natural, and then it just didn't quite work out. Uh, this one here is obviously this character moves excruciatingly slow. Uh, this is Frostblades, and I know Frostblades Trickster is a thing. I liked this skill up until I got up to this point in here. And, you know, you could probably look at these builds, and, and this was the, one of the first ones that I worked on. So there's probably a lot that I've learned since I worked on this one that I could apply and make this one so much better. So some of these I parked early on and I didn't get back to just because, I don't know, I just wasn't feeling them at the time and I started them and moved them back, you know, and, and moved on to something else. Uh, I would bet that if I revisited some of these, I would be able to do things differently. Because one of the things I'm doing with this Exsanguinate build is actually gearing it up as I go and spending the quality time putting into the gear and stuff. And I did not do that with a lot of these builds. I just grabbed whatever is on the floor. And that's probably where a lot of my problems came from instead of trying to actually scale it. The other side of the coin is I actually know how to do a lot with Exsanguinate and I know what I'm expecting. So uh, that's another part of the problem. I don't know what I'm doing with a lot of these builds and a lot of these ascendancies and stuff. So, uh, or skills and ascendancies. So scaling them is a little bit of a chore. Uh, let's see. We can actually run a map with this one. I'll just do a quick low tier map. Uh, let's do something a little bit open, a little bit more fun. Uh, this is this was my creeping frost occultist. I wanted to do exsanguinate occultist, which I did start, and I did a video for this build here at some point. Uh, I did an Exsanguinate Occultist because I thought it'd be very cool, but come to find out the Occultist side really doesn't have that much to offer. So it has a lot of cold and chaos, uh, which that's what I wanted to learn. I wanted to try the th idea in my head and see that it didn't work and why it didn't work. So I knew how to apply it. So I know uh, 
exsanguinate does not work on a cultist. Now, maybe it will work on a different version, uh, uh, maybe a necromancer or something like that. I'm not sure. It's an idea that I have in my head that I may visit at some point. Uh, but I took this one into cold spells. So I was using Creeping Frost, which I really liked. I was having a good time with it. And then I noticed that I really liked uh, this Cold Snap much better. What I was doing is throwing out Creeping Frost, dropping one of these frost uh, bombs, and then firing off Cold Snap. But then I noticed that I could fire Cold Snap off fairly frequently. And I really like that. And I think that's this is something that I've changed since the last video is running with Cold Snap as like the primary skill. So what I'm doing now is basically hitting them with Creeping Frost and then uh, Cold Snap on top of it. And it's just devastating. It is absolutely devastating. But you'll notice that Cold Snap is on a cooldown and I couldn't figure out why it was on a cooldown, but yet I could use it multiple times. Well, come to find out, uh, this thing, uh, where does it say that at? I thought this was very cool. It should be in my six link. Uh, creates a sudden burst of cold in a targeted area, damaging enemies. Also creates an expanding area. Uh, the cooldown can be bypassed by expending a frenzy charge. So we are absolutely generating frenzy charges because I took Disciple... Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Why do I get frenzy charges? Somewhere in here, that's power charges. Somewhere I get frenzy charges. But when the frenzy charges are kicking off, when those are going, I can cast that thing multiple times. And it is awesome. It does like this massive downburst. And you can just plop it along as long as you've got frenzy charges in here. And I may need to, I, once I realized, so I quit working on this one uh, right when I realized how to make it work a little better with frenzy charges and stuff. So I have not visited this since then. I basically got hung up on my tectonic slam build and spent all my time doing that. But you can see stuff just gets melted. I don't want to say melted. It's frozen. Uh, but you can throw that frost bomb out. Like just do three different skills worth of stuff of nasty cold on top of things. And as long as this thing's got frenzy charges, you can just keep dropping these things on here. It'll freeze certain enemies. Uh, I love it. I think this is great. Eh, get away from him. And the uh, uh, Frost Blake also does damage. So you can actually kill things with Frost Blake because I'm scaling that up along with everything else, which I think is really cool because normally movement skills for me are just getting around the map. You know, they're not necessarily... Uh, um, like damaging skills man this guy just does not want to die uh but frost blink's doing twelve thousand damage my creeping frost is 12 about thirteen thousand frost bomb seventeen thousand and this thing's doing twenty thousand uh it might be showing damage from combat but i think this is really cool and i still this build is where it's at uh what i mean by that is it's in like in no way up not only is it not optimized i don't even have the final skill that i want to use with it like i haven't looked at i probably need to look at other people's builds with cold builds and see what they do you know what skills do they uh what support gems do they put on here i just kind of threw some stuff together this is the epitome of just it, it's here and it's working as it is and this is as far as i've gotten uh, i need to really spend a lot of quality time with this build and do more with it than what it is but it it is a lot of fun the way it's at. I'm having a lot of I'm having a lot of fun with this build. I like the occultist ascendancy. I wouldn't mind trying a Desoth occultist just to see how that goes. Um, I don't think I found the Desoth armor this league, and um, yeah, that that's kind of that's it. That's all the characters that are the builds that I've got going so far. Uh, I think there was something else I was gonna put out, point out about this. Oh, the chain support. Somebody mentioned that you could put chain support on Creeping Frost. I was running the multiple projectile things. There's two different versions of it. One shoots three lines straight ahead, and one shoots three lines, one ahead, and two off to each side. And I was running that for a while, and then somebody said you could put um, um, chain support on it. And I said, oh, yeah, I'll put that on there. What I found with chain support is that I don't need to run that one that splits the projectile. I can run this, and it just chains around everything. So... 
this works out really well too. And putting the uh, cold snap in a six link or five link, it's the case may be right now, and then having creeping frost and frost bomb on here, those are pretty cool. Is there other stuff that I could be doing better, like more auras and stuff like that? Yeah, sure. Probably could do a lot of other things. And I know this one's probably going to need some life and some energy shield and stuff like that. It's only level 80. Uh, I have put some time into it, worked on the passive tree a little bit since the last video I put out on this. And, you know, we're in a good spot for some damage over time stuff. A lot of cold. I think in the last video I talked about going into the wand damage. Wand damage had absolutely zero effect on any of these skills. It did not change, uh, well, Creeping Frost. Didn't do anything for Creeping Frost. Uh, I don't know if it does anything for Cold Snap, but I had some points into that that I had to back out of. And that's this is kind of about, it, it's basically where the last video was. So if you've seen that, it's not too much different. The big change with this one was just swapping over to Cold Snap from Creeping Frost. But anyway, that is all the different builds that I've tried, uh, a number of them, really. And that's not to mean that I don't finish something up with some of these, uh, like this occultist one. I, it needs a lot of work because I need to figure out what direction that build needs to go in. I like what's there and what's there is working out is kind of a husk or a, a shell, you know what I mean? But that one needs to be really honed in on and have like a, a goal for it. What can it do well? I think it might be a good bossing build. So I may work towards that with this one. Like my chieftain build, my tectonic slam build is great for clearing maps, but it's not great for bossing. This occultist build, uh, this thing melts things. And if I could get it up to doing bossing, that might be what I do with that. But you know, it's got a lot, long way to go. Uh, 15 levels and whatever all work it takes into it. For the rest of these, I have no idea where I'm going to go with them. I've been working on this Exsanguinate build. I've put a couple of days into that. I am really excited for this one. It's working out really well. As soon as I get done with that, I'm going to go work on Chief Righteous Fiery Balls here. And he's going to be a Righteous Fire build. It's going to be my build. The first time I ever did Righteous Fire, I followed Pox's guide. Actually, the few times that I've done Righteous Fire, I followed Pox's guide. This time, I want to roll with it on my own. I like the the Chieftain Ascendancy. I like the all the access to fire and everything that's around that part of the passive tree and everything. So I want to see what I can do with it and see, can I do anything any good with it? And then... This Exsanguinate build, I've really been focusing on working on the armor and everything, the weapons, and just keeping everything upgraded because it's a second character in the league, and I've already got a lot of currency, and I've got access to the gear and everything else that I, whatever I can get. I'm going to do that same thing with this Righteous Fire build is just build it from the ground up and not pick up whatever comes on the ground. That's one of the mistakes I've made with some of these other builds. I'm going to actually sit down and, and roll these things, put some quality on them, because some of these builds I was building when I didn't really have a lot of currency at all. And now I've got a, a decent stack of currency and I can work on these things. So it might be a lot different revisiting them. And I've got the experience of building some of these other builds. Uh, there's a lot of other things I want to try, but that's what I've gotten up to this league. That's all the different builds that I've got. Uh, there was a whole bunch of other characters. I deleted them off. I, the, all the ones that were level two, I decided that I wanted to focus my energy at this point on Exsanguinate and Righteous Fire. So I'm going to do these two Chieftain builds. At some point, I will potentially do this uh, Tectonic Slam Chieftain in SSF. That way I can get a good guide for it and, you know, do a uh, do it right. You know, here's how I would league start it because that's going to be my practice for next league. So anyway, that's going to do it for this video. We will catch you on the next one. Take care.